still I still get to pick the jobs that I will do yeah. or that I won't do. Yeah. I, like, I don't feel like I'm being held ransom to money. And so that's a really important thing. I'm doing what I want to do, mm. how I want to do it, when I want to do it. What's going on, people? And welcome back to The Black Print, providing aspiring black entrepreneurs and business owners the blueprint to start your success story. I'm your host, Darren, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. But before we get into that, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Music, please give us a five star rating and also leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the pods. Cool. So without much further ado, I am joined today by Martha da Costa from the Cosme Group. Thank Hello. You. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm no. honoured to be here. Well, I'm honoured that you, you take your time out of your day to come and have a sit down and have a conversation with me. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. How are you this morning? Well, it's actually afternoon, isn't afternoon. it? Afternoon. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I've had a, you know, stress-free morning, relaxed. My brother came to help me do some stuff with um, the cupboards today. And nice. then, then I've come out here. And it's good, actually, to kind of get out, as yeah. I was saying. I've been doing a few podcasts, but they've been on Zoom. So really? This is kind of like the first one face to face. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's good. Um, so perfect. So right, let's let's get cracking. So for those that um for those that don't may not know you, mm -hmm. please if you could just run us through a little introduction as to who yourself run and the, and the business that you run. Yeah. So um, my name is Martha De Costa Sherwood, um, and actually, so I used to be a teacher. So um, in the education field for the past fifteen years, worked my way up through that through to leadership up until headship, which is an interesting story. Part of how I ended up doing my business because I done a stint in Nigeria. We will talk nice. more about that. <laughs> um, and then, so now I have the Cosme Group, which um, is, well, I want to be a serial entrepreneur. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm a serial <laughs> entrepreneur. And so I have a few hats underneath that, but mm. all kind of in the training and professional, personal and professional development field mm. um, with a few, all kind of about self-care, self-love and really bettering yourself. So that's kind of the different things that I do. Nice. Okay. And so in terms of um, the Cosme group, what falls under that remit? So we have Martha de Cosme, which is um, myself as a kind of a business consultant, transformational coach. We've got the Cosme Consulting, which focuses more on um, just the business consulting side of that and training and development mm. in there. Um, and then we have uh, the Cosme Travel, which is um, about trying to, what I really want to do is typically take more people back to Africa and do travel in Africa. But I think I'll start in Europe or in the UK and just mm. people kind of taking time out and kind of helping themselves and prioritizing themselves. Mm. Um, kind of, there. and we have naturally, I'm an educationalist, so we've got the Cosmic Education and that kind of does a very similar thing with teachers and school leaders. So training and coaching and, de and development and there's some things in the pipeline as well um that i want to like later on so the the vision is is that under that umbrella we'll have you know a beauty line maybe go into some sort of entertainment stuff mm. that's a bit further down the line nice and i think uh, it's interesting that you say about the kind of taking people or getting people to go back to to africa because yeah. um this week, I saw a post actually on Instagram that um, this girl was kind of saying, why is everybody going back to Dubai? You know, Africa's open for business. You yeah. can go there. Why mm -hmm. Why are people not going there? So I think that's that's quite interesting and I guess quite relevant right now as yeah. well with regards to that. Where are you from, by the way? So I'm Caribbean. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Jamaican. And that's a big part of it as well, because when I went to Nigeria, everybody, everyone, everyone here, when I was saying I was going, they're like, why? That was the first <laughs> question. Wait, why? Why are you going? Those who knew I mm. was Caribbean, they, everyone was just like, why? <laughs> and then um, those who those who didn't know just thought, okay, you're going back. You're going back home. So mm. then when they found out, they were still like very much so, why? And for me, um, I very much believe that Africa is the motherland. Mm. I don't think there's sometimes there's a divide. I'm very much in touch with my Caribbean roots, but then there's, there's those Caribbean roots. There's another place that we come from from that. 
And so I went to Nigeria wanting, and because my friends are gone, the majority of my friends who are African are Ghanaian <laughs> and Nigerian. So they were the two cultures that I knew the most of. So it didn't feel as scary and as alien as yeah. the, you know going to a whole new place by yourself. Unfortunately, yeah. I had also been to both countries as well. So having been there, I kind of like these, they were literally like, I put it on a spectrum. Ghana's calm. <laughs> Ghana, Gha- Ghanaians are calm and Ghana's calm. <laughs> And then there's Jamaica's in the middle. We're a bit crazy. And then there's Nigeria. And Nigeria <laughs> is off the Richter scale. <laughs> Literally. That is oh, how it is. Word. But there's similarities between all of them. I, I might get a few uh, comments after that because a lot of the closest people to me are Nigerian. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll see what they have to say. But I about loved that. it. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. I, on it, like, honestly, I loved it. Mm. And like, Nigeria's like home. It's mm. literally like home. I, I would still be there. I've started to... You know, I've got I've got land there. I want to potentially nice. have a second home there, mm. and I also want to do the same in Jamaica. But I didn't I didn't realize I could feel so much at home mm. in a country that wasn't my own. Mm. And so yeah, nice. I always take offense there when people talk about West Africa in particular, and they only mention Nigeria and Ghana because I'm from Sierra Leone. Oh, I, I like to think that we're the best West African <laughs> country, but I feel like uh, evidence suggests otherwise. Well, but I, I we're just, coming. Maybe there's not enough of you that have come. This is to, true to London in particular. <laughs> and infiltrated this, you know what that's very true you know, so. I'll give you that I'll give you that wow so okay that's that's very interesting so where do you think that the whole because I mean you mentioned wanting to be a serial entrepreneur mm-hmm. um, and I'm always quite interested when not only when somebody makes or starts one business but they're like okay next one I want to do this I want to do that they've got big plans right so where do you think your kind of entrepreneurial spirit or not even just wanting to settle for one business but wanting to have an empire like or a dynasty where did that come from do you know one thing ever since i was a kid i always wanted to own my own business okay. like that that was the number one thing i wanted to do and so when i went to school we didn't do business studies mm. so it wasn't there so i done business studies at a level and mm. i remember at that time so that was like i was 16 in 2000 and so i remember thinking okay so for a levels when i was going around looking at colleges what is it i want to do i said i want to own my own business so i've got to do business mm. and then at that time i was like ict is going to be really big so i've got to do ict so they were like the reasons why i done those two subjects mm. and then the rest i was just like okay what am i going to do i went around to colleges seeing what things were happening oh sorry actually i also wanted to do psychology and sociology mm. but i couldn't pick between them okay so i was like so i done none of them so i was like no 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 <laughs> i can't pick so i didn't do either <laughs> And, and then it just happened to be, I went to Christ the King. I went to the open evening, like the media studies department was amazing. And then, so I done business, ICT um, and media. Mm. And then, and then from, from that went on naturally still wanted to do business, really loved it. And then by that time I had really distinguished the difference between psychology and sociology mm. and what I wanted to do. And so I chose psychology. And so I done my degree was business studies and psychology. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, and so it was always under that guise of just kind of finding out, you know, what it is I wanted to do, what my passion was, kind of home and all of that stuff. And I didn't also didn't want to be too specialist too soon. Mm. Um, so that's what I did. And then doing going through that, I found out that when I was doing business studies, I was very much the people side, which makes sense with the psychology. Mm. So after you've done all the stuff that you have to do, I very much done more of the HR units. I wasn't mm. really a marketer. Marketing wasn't really me. I mean, you do it, but it wasn't my passion. I was more the human resource side of it. Mm. And that linked in very much with my kind of um, uh, psychology um, part of it. And then so, and I went to Roehampton, which has a very heavy teaching element. Mm. And actually, if we if we go back a step, I wanted to be a teacher when I left school. Um, originally, I wanted to be a primary teacher. And I'm that typical person. I was like, you know, I was that child at school. I was top set for everything. So, you know, you just think you're smarter than you really are. I was proper, <laughs> like proper, fully underachieving in everything that you do. Like I was, I was that girl. Um, and I didn't get my science GCSE. Mm. And, but I was like, I'm never, you know, I was like, I'm never, ever, ever, I'm never going back to school. I'm never redoing anything. Yeah. So it was just like, and at that, and even now you need maths, English and science to mm. do um, teaching at primary level. Okay. So I was just like, oh, well. I'm just, I'm literally, I was just like, oh, well, I'm just not going to be a teacher because I'm never going back. Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, oh, well, <laughs> to it. So going through school, and Roehampton's very much, um, it used to be, it started as a teaching university. And so mm. it was very much um, heavily influenced by the teaching side of it. And so I was like, okay, Martha, 
you can't write off a whole career, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for yeah. you to just go back for a year. So in my first year of uni, I went back and I was doing nights, evening classes to mm. redo my science. Okay. So I redone my science. And then after all of that, my, it was my accounting teacher. And I, he was really, really helpful. Um, and I just, we really, really got on. And I was telling him like what I wanted to do, where, you know, where I wanted to go and stuff. And he was like, no, Martha, mm -mm. You can't be a primary teacher. You'll be wasted. You've got to be really? a secondary teacher. So after all of that, <laughs> after yeah, going back and doing the science, because presumably even... secondary teaching, you have to be. So more you need maths and English. You need maths oh, and English. Math. Okay. You need maths and English, but you don't need the science. And okay. and it's kind of like then you do your you do your subject. Mm. And so from that point on, teaching has just always been like I think that's been that people side. I, I was always again the person even at school helping people. So mm. through. Through uni, I was the people with particular. I don't know what it is with boys. What? What, what, like, what have we done? No, no seriously. <laughs> it was like the boys, and I'd be like, hmm. So, because but also, so that my second year of uni, I was a flat rep. Mm. So, you support the, the freshers and all the new people. So, the, the boys who were doing business and you know the processes, I'm mm. like, don't you have an assignment due? And they were like, oh, yeah. And I'm just, I just like, how did you not even make it to university? <laughs> So with my friends and with the youngers and everything, I was always kind of just helping people. I just naturally fell into that role. Mm. Literally, I naturally fell into that role. Everybody, they would just be like, Martha, you just need to be a teacher because mm. you're a teacher. And even with my friends and when I talked to them, and I suppose I became a teacher straight away, but for everything, whenever we're, whether it's a party or we're organizing something or something happens, they just be like, Martha, I'm not one of your kids. Don't speak to me like you're one of, one of your children. <laughs> and I, it's not because I'm a teacher that I was speaking to my like that. It's just, yeah. it was more innate. It was mm. more natural. And so I think that's why I ended up in business. I taught business kind of an economics. You ended up in ICT and media and all of it. Mm. You kind of end up down there. But I always, I just always knew I wanted to own my own business. Like mm. I just knew that's something I wanted to do. Um, and, but I just didn't know what. Mm. So I think the thing that was missing was I never had the thing. There was nothing else that I was hugely passionate about. Education was is, is was and still is very much what I was passionate about. Mm. So it wasn't about money. Like, of course, no one, none of us are out here working for free. So I'm not saying that's not, it's not important. But for me, if I'm not passionate about something, it, nothing's going to make me go and do it. Mm. And so I just never found the thing that kind of, you know, it wasn't like I um, do this product and then go open a business or, yeah. or it was, it wasn't even a, you know, you can make lots of money out of something. So go and do it. And so I didn't until I knew what it was I wanted. And I always wanted to do something in education. Mm. And it's very difficult to be profitable in education because you've got to help people. You know, it's not something that you're going to go out there and just be like, okay, I'm going to be making loads, ridiculous yeah. amounts of money. So there was always this kind of, um, kind of clash between my passion, what I wanted to do. And mm. also it's in the field where it's very much about helping. And so as time, as time went on, it became apparent, okay, I was like, okay, so I want to do something in education, but, but what? Mm. Like, okay, it's going to be something around that. I didn't, I didn't have the foggiest. I didn't know what it was. I, honestly, I didn't. That's why I was just, all my kids would be like, miss, you're a business studies teacher. Why don't you um, start a business? And you know, there's that whole saying, oh, those who do can, those yeah. who can't teach. So there was all <laughs> of that around it kind of stuff. But it was just literally like, I didn't have a service or a product or something that was just vibing with me that I felt I really want to, kind of get out and do that mm. none of that really um none of that happened until until when i went to nigeria so and <laughs> it's funny because at the time everyone feels like oh you went so at the time just before that my partner at the time was in nigeria mm. so with the last half of our relationship we were having a long distance relationship mm. but we actually broke up but I didn't tell anybody. Very few people knew about it. So when I was going to Nigeria, everyone thought I was going for him. Yeah. And it was just easy. I needed the time and the space. And I was literally, I was running away. Mm. It was just like, I'm 30. I've just broke up with my partner. I've got no children. It was like my worst nightmare was happening, mm. you know? And, and then I realized that Martha, actually, you didn't die. It's really not the end of the world. But I also realized that subconsciously, those are the sorts of things that we have on our mind. Yeah. And I needed to just get out. And I'm and I'm very responsible sometimes, as it is with Caribbean and African families. You know, I was the person that was responsible for my father and responsible for my younger brother. And yeah. I was just, everything was on me. So whilst everyone was like, wow, Martha, you're so brave. You're going to a whole new country. I was running away. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I was yeah. doing. I was fully running away. So I ran away, went to Nigeria, knowing absolutely nobody or nothing. 
and just kind of making ties there. Mm. And it was an ama- it was a year, like a life changing year. Just being in a black country, but mm. I don't think people understand the importance of that. It's really big. And it was being in a black country where where people are successful. There's mm. none of this rhetoric where, you know, black people are worthless, black men are useless, you know, you know, they're not good fathers, they've been there was none of that. Yeah. Um you're rolling with people who are successful, who have money, who have drive. Like naturally I went as an expat, so you're in a particular type of circle. Mm. So I'm not saying that it's all rosy. I, I do know that, but still, still being able to see that, yeah. well, it was really big. And and I wasn't an angry black woman. I wasn't too loud. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't too much. Yeah. None of those things. And so it was, it was really important for me. Um, but unfortunately, typical things that happen in my school couldn't afford to pay for me, pay yeah. me. So um, my contract got stopped after a year and I came back home. How long I, were you supposed to be out there for? I was, my contract was like three years. Oh, wow. So first year came back and I was like, and it was just, it was amazing. It, it's important because also my friendships, mm. it really cemented my friendships because the, I was away. Mm. And so when I came back or that t- or when I was coming back on those holidays, it, my friends were making time to see me mm. and all of those things add to everything that you're doing. And so yeah. people were so proud. Like it, I was just, I was just doing me, you know, I've always been ambitious. I've always wanted to do things. So I was just doing my journey and the people around you are like, oh, we're so proud of you. I was telling my friend that, oh, I've got a friend who went to Nigeria and she's a head teacher and, you know, and they're telling you all the things that they're doing. You're coming yeah. back and they're making time for you. And it's a, it was it was amazing. And I came back and everyone was like, Martha, I know you're really sad because you wanted to be out there, but we're really glad to have you back as well. And I was like, okay, so I'm back. And I was, listen, I was fully on, I'm not staying here. Really? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was fully on. To be fair, I don't blame you. I'm not staying here. You, it, it's like you came out of the fire. Yeah. You can't come out of the fire and then come back. Mm. You can't. I was like, I'm not staying here. So I'm finding a way to get back. <laughs> but I was like, okay, but I was also like, I can't go back into the education system. Okay. I was like, I, I can't. And I'm like, okay, Martha, well, you've reached the top of your career. You always wanted to be a head teacher. You've done everything, right? You know, you've, you've got your master's, you've got your house you became a head teacher after that you always said you wanted to own your own business mm. you've come back to no job because i haven't got a job now so what have you got to lose really mm. you've got nothing to lose that the biggest thing that we worry about is you know am i going to quit my full-time job with my full-time salary to start a business yeah. well i had no salary so i had nothing to lose yeah I had nothing to lose so I literally and I think sometimes as well being a business study teacher you hear about all the paperwork and all the theory behind things it's really not that hard <laughs> so if anyone wants to open a business honestly it's really not that hard you literally go to a company's house make sure your name's not you know check all the names <laughs> yeah. find a name that's not been taken fill out the paperwork and literally it's you either do it by guarantee or by shares yeah literally you pay your 13 pounds and your company's incorporated there you go you've got a business and you've got a business <laughs> and to be fair when i did that i felt like a fraud <laughs> i honestly did i felt like a fraud because i i think we think somehow there has to be some big challenge yeah. we've got this struggle mentality and i was like well i'm a director <laughs> Because <laughs> obviously everyone's idea of a director is the guy that's on like four hundred thousand pounds a year at the top of a limited company or something, you know, isn't it? Yeah, and you, know, I, you know, I went and got those business cards because I think <laughs> you know it's like when you're sixteen or when you become to a certain age and you want to see letters come through the door with yeah. your name on it until they start no, becoming bills. Wait, yeah, Do you remember when yeah. you first got them? You were like, "Ooh, there's a letter with my name," and they started becoming bills, and you were like, "I'm not about this." You know what made me laugh with them ones? With my ones, of, of, as a guy, uh, when we were a kid, our ones coming as master. Yeah, <laughs> I always get those like master that's right parents stop referring to me as master I'm, I'm the master <laughs> I'm of the, the master. House. Like, and I was just like so obviously in that era so I had my business when I got my business cards it mm. says I'm a you know I'm a director I was feeling myself <laughs> I was fully feeling myself in the whole zone but at the same time I'm like this is fraud <laughs> <laughs> because like you you're not making any money <laughs> you ain't got no money coming in or anything you're doing all this stuff and then I realized but this is what people do. Mm. Everyone, everyone started somewhere. Even if you had a cash injection from somewhere, mm. from money, like you put that money in before, you didn't just make money overnight. Yeah. 
everyone starts from somewhere. And I think that's what it is. I think we have this crazy idea about what it actually means to run a business yeah. and you know be a business owner and the things that you have to do to kind of go through it. And I think a lot of that also starts with that whole imposter syndrome. Because mm-hmm. you just kind of think, well, I'm not that, which is why I felt like a fraudster. I kind of felt like, well, can I say that I'm a, I, I have a business and I'm, mm. and I'm this person? Can I, can I say that? Because I don't have all of these things that I thought you were, you were supposed to have. And sometimes it makes you think, you know, am I up to scratch? You know, mm. am, I, am I worthy? Can, can I make it? And once you've done that and you've put yourself out there, the next level is this fear of failure mm. because now you've got something to lose potentially. Yeah. Now you went out there, you opened a business, you told all your friends you've opened a business, you, you know, you're starting to put yourself out there. Mm. The, the next big thing you have is, is I can't fail, yeah. you know? And sometimes that, that, can, that can cripple you. Unfortunately, so that was the idea. So when I started, I started as the Cosme what did I start? No, sorry. I started as the Cosmic Education. Mm. So when I first opened my business, it was just the Cosmic Education. Because remember, that's all I, that is where I was. Mm. I was like, okay, I've come back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into business. I'm going to go into consulting. Obviously, education, training and consulting. That's my specialism. That's what I'm passionate about. That's mm. what I like doing. So that's what, so literally, that's what I, that's what I was doing. So when I first started out, that is exactly what I was doing. But then, um, like I said, I went trying to stay and, um, uh, one of my contacts in Nigeria, there was a headship place that came up again. So I went through that whole process. So I was leaving the country again. <laughs> so I was leaving again. So I was preparing. So by, I was back. So over the summer period, I knew by September that I wouldn't be going back. So I was, you know, preparing. I opened my, my business. It was like the 15th of September or something. I incorporated it. Wait, sorry. So the headship came up, but that didn't go, that didn't fall through or that didn't pull no, through? No. So I'd come back from the first headship. Yeah. So over the summer period, I was meant to go back in September. So oh, as in if, it, if you had stayed on the three-year contract? If I stayed okay, on the three-year yeah, contract. Sorry. But I didn't find out till that September mm. that I wasn't going back. So it was like right. the 1st of September, I realised I wasn't going back. Yeah. That's when I went into, okay, you know, you've got to open your business. Mm. Incorporated my business on around like the 15th of September. Mm. So this is when I'm now saying, okay. Anyways, so no then, time. <laughs> no, I can just watch. I just need to make money. Yeah. Like, you know? And so then I'm like, okay. Uh, I need to start, you know, doing my connections, going Mm. to schools, you know, seeing what I can do. And then November is when I got a contact to say that there's a headship in Nigeria Mm. that I could uh, um, apply for. So this is like two months later, went through the process. So now I'm going through an interview process or potentially I might be leaving the country again. Mm. Um, So that happened. I saw the final owner of the school in the February, the following year. And so it was cemented that I was going back and I was going to go back in May. Okay. So, oh, sorry, what year is this? So this is now 20... So I came back 2016. Mm. So it was 2016... Was it 20, 2016 that I incorporated my business. Mm. So then 2017 is when I'll be going back. So okay. May 2017. So I was home for like nine months. And so now I've opened my business. I've started kind of doing training education-wise here. And then now I'm going to Nigeria. And mm. I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do? So then I changed my name to the Cosme Consulting. Mm. So I thought, okay, so it's going to be, e- because I'm going to be, now I'm going to be working full time. So I'm going to be working at the same time as schools. I'm mm. going to be on holiday at the same time as schools. So I'm not going to be able to just do education. And obviously business is the other side of me. So I was like, what I will do is to teach to training, but I'll also do training um, for organizations and consulting. Yeah. And in this field in Nigeria, you can do that some more. So when I went to Nigeria, I changed my name to the Cosme Consulting. And that's what I was doing. I was doing teacher training. I was doing business consulting Mm. at the same time. And again, I was building myself up in Nigeria, you know, getting my name out there. I feel like I know where this is going. No, please, no. (laughs) You know where it's going. I'm, I'm, I'm building, you know, starting to get known and kind of doing all that stuff. So I was in that, my second headship for two and a half years. Mm. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, my elder brother passed away. Okay. And actually, before that, my stepmom passed away, mm. like six months or so before that. And that year that my stepmom passed away, um, like the summer before she passed away, that summer I came home and, in fact, did it, was it even summer? But it was around about that time. Came mm. home. Nobody knew I was in the country. I was going to surprise. Actually, it was October. So the October before, came home because my friend from uni had a wedding. So no one knew I was in the country. I was literally just gonna 
kind of and I was going to Dubai mm. so it was literally a couple of days it was about um, half term a couple of days here go to the wedding go to Dubai you know I was going to drop in and see my dad I got a phone call whatsapp phone call because everyone thinks I'm in Nigeria <laughs> um, and it's my uncle to say that my dad had a stroke and I'm literally okay so everyone doesn't know my mum passed away when I was 12 um, I'm the only girl I'm very very close to my dad he's like my world and so I was just I'm telling you that even till today even though after that he's had strokes that very first one was like I would never wish that kind mm. of fear on anybody I didn't even know what to do with myself I was, it was just like I was sitting in the car like googling what happens if someone has a stroke because you know you see you know when you hear stroke it's like the end of the world like yeah. you just think someone's going to be paralyzed and all these things I was it was crazy and we called the hospital to find out where he was and when I got to the hospital they couldn't find him and um the uh the when they finally kind of found him well said to us the woman brought me in and she goes she goes literally this is what she did she comes in she goes oh wait in the family room I was like you know you've seen TV when they tell you to wait in the family room. So yeah. now I'm sat there like, you're 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 kidding me. Like this this like I was like, I was prepared to be going saying to the doctors, mm, okay, we might need to turn the machine off. Like you know like that's I was like he might be paralyzed and I might be saying because my dad's very active mm. and I'd be like as much as I want you to be here I wouldn't want you to. That's what I was prepared for. I wasn't prepared for you to come and be telling me the story that he's no longer with us. So I sat there for that moment. And then she came in and she's like, oh, you can come. And I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. And I went in and I saw my dad. I remember he doesn't know I'm in the country. Mm. So, and he's like, my dad's like Popeye. That's what he looks like. That's why when he tells me about what my dad looks like, he's like Popeye. He's like that like, bald head, little man, muscular. So I came in and I was like, dad, and I was rubbing his head. I'm like, dad, <laughs> dad, are you all right? He looks at me and he's like, oh, master. And I'm like, excellent. He knows who I am. Yeah. So he's all right. And I'm like, dad, are you all right? And I'm like, feeling all over his body. I'm like, are you okay? Can you, can you feel your arms, dad? Yeah. Can you feel your legs, dad? Like, he's like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm okay, I'm all right, cool. And then, you know, I came out and I just, I, I just collapsed. Yeah. I just was bawling. And so that shook me, because I was even like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I was supposed to go to Dubai, how am I gonna get back to the country? You know, mm. I was doing all of that sort of stuff, but fortunately he was okay. And so that was like before that summer. Then in the summer period, he had another stroke again oh. it's like he has all the strokes when i'm in the country he had another stroke but unfortunately my stepmom was also in hospital and she was starting to get dementia mm. so i that whole summer i was in different wards the same hospital yeah. but on different wards and i like even the women um who were looking after my stepmom they were like oh the, her husband used to be here where is he and i'm like he's in like the other ward and when we done her so just before i was going back to nigeria i was doing her discharge papers i had the meeting with her and she just wanted to go home and they, we were sending her home. She just had dementia. She was weak. She, she, they couldn't really operate on something, but it was nothing life threatening. Mm. My dad was in his wheelchair. We, you know, we done a dis. I done a discharge before I left, and I went, literally, like, let's say that was like the Tuesday. I came home, like, to, went to Nigeria Wednesday, and like that, I would have landed like at night time, so that the Thursday morning woke up and said that she had passed away. Wow. And I was just like, wow, because that wasn't the plan, you know, yeah. like. You, you can never prepare for it but we weren't she wasn't being sent home critically terminally ill she had dementia we had to but no we we're gonna get her care and prepare for her but that was it and so that was a big thing you know and then i had to come back for the funeral for that and then that was like the november by the time we buried her and then april the following year my elder brother passed away the oh. joke of it was is i wasn't in the country i was actually on a trip so i was in thailand when i got the news and I literally sat there and I was like, God, really? I was like, really, is this what we're doing? I'm saying, so everyone's just gonna die around me. And I just realized that I said, okay, I have to come home because I was settling so much more and more in Nigeria that I was, it, what was happening was, so the first year I went, I came home every three months. Yeah. And then I came home like one summer. And then this one, that was gonna be the same thing. All of my holidays, I'd been flying around the world and I was only going to go home for the summer. So I was very much becoming like Nigeria was going to be the base. UK was going to be the summer. You know, you just see people. Mm. And I was just like, I'm going to have to come home and do it the other way around. Like be based here and then travel and also kind of like come back, look after my dad. So I came home and actually it was, you know, it was crazy. So came home May last year. First three months, I didn't do anything, you know, nothing like, at all. Like it was just, 
you know i was numb even like up until we sorted out like the funeral like it was it was just i was just soldier you know you're just mm. doing it and then the period afterwards when the reality hits and everything that's happening and i was in a and i'm what i'm battling now is i've got to be here for my dad but i really don't want to be in this country yeah and but i don't have a job so and i can't go back to i can't like the default is actually tell a lie no tell a lie i did go back into education because i also love teaching i love my teaching i lasted six weeks i was on two days a week and it wasn't because it's hard i can like it's easy i just i just i just never had it in me anymore to deal with the the bureaucracy that's in the system yeah i lasted six weeks literally as i I can't especially after you kind of told yourself like you're gonna do your own thing and you set set it up and you're ready like like, yeah i guess that must be tough no i can't i couldn't i couldn't do it so then uh, then it was like i knew so that was up until like october and i was like no math you've got to do your business and so i thought okay this is what we're gonna do start your and that's kind of how i ended up doing realizing i wanted to be like a serial entrepreneur Mm. because there's a few different things that i'm passionate about and whenever you do business people are always trying to pigeonhole you or box you into one area (laughs) find your ideal your target customer one thing that person it has to be this woman or this man or this thing or you know (laughs) it has to be that thing and the reality of it is throughout my entire career I'm kind of a jack of all trades Mm. and not mediocre wise. I'm just genuinely good at a lot of different things. Mm. And so it was kind of like, so for example, I'm typically, I go down a very academic leadership route. Mm. So they were all the job roles that I had. So I was, I wasn't pastoral, which is more the behavior safety stuff, but that's my preference. As I said, you know, I'm more the people side of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my preference. And that's the side I wanted to go. That's the side I was always trying to go down. Mm. But because I had capabilities in the leadership side and they're often needed there, that's where I ended up. Mm. So what it meant was when when <clears throat> people were saying, okay, so if you want to do training, are you doing behavior management? Are you doing leadership? Are you doing teaching and learning? Or are you doing safeguarding? I could do all of them. Yeah. I genuinely could do all of them. And like in its training, I was genuinely interested to the same level and capacity. So I was like, okay, so how do I pick what my special limit is? How, what do, what do I do? You know, um, like even, even now, so I work with women, but I've only ever really fully worked with women like that in my business. Cause through education, I worked with men. Mm. Like I done training and coaching and consulting with business with men, mm. but it's like, oh yeah, but you've got to focus down one person. So, it, so the beginning part of my business even in terms of what my message is and who I'm targeting, because all of that's important when you're putting yourself out there. Yeah, I suppose that also wasn't very clear because because I provide a service. It's a, actually the biggest part of what everything I want is is about individuals prioritizing themselves mm. and understanding that you can you can get to the height of whatever it is that you want to achieve without sacrificing your goals. That is what it's really about because that's what I achieved, and so I wanted other people to be able to have that. I come from very humble beginnings, you know, I come from very humble beginnings, but I had lots of goals and lots of things I wanted to do and I achieved all of them. I've been to every single country that was on my bucket list. Like I'd done everything that I wanted to do. I bought my house at, I bought my house at 27, Mm. Um, uh, my dream house. Like I said, I wanted the, like I got it, the, the dream house in London, where I want, in Southeast London, where I wanted to be, you know, I went to all the countries that I wanted to go to. I got, I done the headship. I opened my business. I done everything I wanted to do. And I just feel like, why do people say that we can't do these things? And I want others to say, you can do that. And it wasn't terrible. There, there are sacrifices that you need to make along the way. And that's what I wanted to share. That's not because I'm a woman. So it's not only women can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's a formula or there's things that you can do. I wanted everybody to be able to access that. So I was really battling this whole thing of, you have to say it's for a woman or you have to say it's for this person you have to say it's for 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 that person because i've helped and supported people who are 18 to people who are 50. Mm. so why do i have to kind of break it down and so i was just like well no i don't want to do that and i'm very rebellious i'm very rebellious so i was like no i'm not doing that actually and so i was and i wanted to do there's little bits of everything that you like so i love teaching i want to work with students but i want to work with them how i want to work with them i love training I love consulting. 
I love coaching. So I was literally at the beginning doing a little bit of everything. And it was it was marvellous. It really was. <laughs> and it was pain. I was fortunate. I don't know how I managed to get those contracts or things were just falling in place, which meant I had money. Mm. And fortunately, through this whole year, 2020 hasn't been, oh, I'm waiting for 2020 to end. It's been a very good year for me. Mm. And on its fortune, like, like it's... And I say it's fortune, not in a airy, fairy, things just fell on your lap type of way. In a... Because I always made sure... I'd done what I wanted to do it meant that I had the knowledge skills or experience to to do that contract you yeah. know or to provide those skills or to do those things because I had put myself in that position yeah so one of the things I would say to us is you have to find your passion mm. you have to because when it gets hard and you don't want to do things it's only your passion that's going to keep you going you know like I, I don't care what anyone says I don't I honestly don't believe there's no amount of money because I wasn't earning the same amount of money I wasn't earning the same amount of money when um, when I when I started. You know, once I decided, okay, I'm not going. It would have been very easy for me to go back into leadership. I was a head teacher. I'd just come back, become a head teacher, make loads of money. Mm. No, I'm I'm so much happier. My the quality of my life, the quality of my life is second to none, <laughs> and I don't earn now still as half as much money. Well, maybe more than half, but you know, I don't earn as much money as I was mm. doing that because I'm still building. But my life, quality wise, is ten times better. I can imagine. Ten times better, really, wow. really, really is. Wow, that 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 is one heck of a journey. First of all, <laughs> that uh, boy, I'm still just like processing everything that you've you, you've said that. I mean, well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about obviously yeah. your dad, your yeah. older brother, and your and your stepmom. My dad's still here, though. He's still sorry, here. Sorry, your um yeah 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 um yeah. stepmom and your older brother, brother. You said right yeah, here. Yeah. Um, that must have obviously been very tough. It was, yeah. It was. It through. was. It was, and I think, I think also, that's also one of the reasons why I think it's really important that we don't waste life. Why, yeah. for me. You know, my mum passed away at 12. That was had a really big impact on you. So it had a type of impact that when you experience other people going through things, I mm. just kind of feel like I know because mm. I lost one of the most important people at a very young age. So I understood from a young age that death happens. Mm. So it's a really big thing. And then when these things start happening more and more and more, I just feel like I feel to people, don't don't waste your life because what are you actually what are you waiting for? Mm. Like what are you actually waiting for and another really another really big part of that why i say it's really important we go out there put ourselves do what it is that you want to do is coming home um i had real. i found out that i have arthritis in my hip and uh it's it's really painful and it's just, it's just got worse and worse as i've been here you know the cold and whatever so in nigeria it was just a little twing actually it would mainly just hurt after i've come back from partying <laughs> i like to party yeah i'm a party animal <laughs> Yeah, and so I was just like, I was just thinking, oh my gosh, really? When you start to get to thirty, your body Listen. really starts to deteriorate. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't hear that. That's, right? that's so, going to be me, me next year. So I was just thinking, oh gosh, really? Like it's, <laughs> it's only thirty, but but it was arthritis, and mm. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. So dancing has always been, that's my thing for me, mm. and it and, and currently. I can't, it, it hurts to do normal things, let alone really? dance. Yeah, I can't even wind up my waist anymore really? because Too that set? hurts. Like a little bit, but it really, it really does hurt. And so, yeah. literally, actually, last week, I um, well, this week actually, Wednesday, I was at the hospital, uh, um, and basically, he, the author was just like, "I'm like, so the only way we're going to solve this is with a hip replacement." He's like, "Yeah," and I was like, "I think I need a couple more months to kind of process that." Yeah. Process. I mean, they've said it for a while, yeah. but I'm like, I think I need some more time. That's where we're at. The only reason why I'm okay is because, like I said, I done everything. Mm. I like literally, I done everything, everything that, and though most of those things require me to be in a good, healthy state. Yeah, I done all of those things, fortunately. So I don't feel devastated. Like I can't, can like my life's not over, and I'm gonna get a hip replacement, and you know I'm gonna be okay. But I'm just saying, in that moment, the thing that has given me solace is the fact that I it did everything that I wanted to do in my life and I, so I'm not at a point where I'm waiting mm. and that's I don't no, don't wait there's no such thing as failure the way I got over that fear of failure is, is there's no such thing as failure mm. like there's nothing so the first couple years of my life of, of my business 
we weren't breaking even. In fact, to be fair, I probably still haven't broken even. I'm making money in now, but considering the amount of money that I put in from before, mm. I still probably haven't broke even in terms of, so I'm not in the red in terms of my expenditure and income, mm. but I don't think I've recuperated all the money that I put yeah. in yet. But, but that doesn't mean I'm a failure. No. So I haven't failed, it's going to happen. It's gonna take time. It might take, it might take longer. You might have to take a break. You might have to change your name three times, <laughs> you know, or go into go into different areas, but you haven't failed. You've only failed if you give up and quit and stop. So it's fine, like do it. And whatever ha mistake happens, if you don't get a contract, why did you not get the contract? Mm. If the idea or launch that you said <clears throat> fails, okay, wh why did it fail? Learn from it and, and make it better. But don't give up because there isn't, that what is the actual point of living? What are we living for? What are you doing it for? So, and business isn't for everybody. So this is not out here saying everyone should go up and, and start a business. No, whatever it is you wanna do. But if that is what you wanna do, then work at it for your entire life. Yeah. If it takes your entire life, literally, at least you were working towards something that is for you. And that for me is the biggest part of it. I, will, I probably end up working more hours now than I ever have. And I've always been a workaholic. But it doesn't feel bad because it's for me. Yeah. It's like I'm working hard for me, for literally for me, for the thing that I want to build or the money that I want to make or even my own freedom. You know, I have that freedom and that luxury to, to go and come as I please. And so, yeah, like it, it's worth it. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely worth it. And I say, listen, we never chase money too many of us end up chasing money. And I say, don't chase the money, okay? Money is a means to an end. What is it that you wanna do with the money? Mm. What is it that you wanna do? And focus on achieving that because you'll probably end up doing it because if you chase money, you'll end up, you might take a role or a job or you'll do something because you want this piece of money. And then the thing you wanted the money for, you don't end up doing it anyway. So that's what I say. The biggest thing we worry about is failing. Mm. I don't believe there's anything such a thing such as failure. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, and I think that's a powerful um, thought to have as well because it, it kind of just means that if you think that way, you you th make the leap, right? And yeah. you make the decision and who knows where you'll end up? Who knows where you'll end up? I think something that you just touched on um, just now has literally just escaped me. Um, <laughs> what was it I was about to um, mention? I can't remember. Hopefully it comes back it to me. Back. But what, um, what I will ask you next then is what... Um, what kind of lessons through through kind of everything you've experienced in terms of prior to or kind of even during starting your business what what lessons would you say you've learned from that have made you kind of a better person and 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 helped you channel that in towards your business and making your business a better business i think um i think definitely the messaging has been a big thing and i and i'd honestly say to you like so I said to you that I'm on a break and I'm very much kind of been on a break from putting things out there because I just knew my mess. there was, nothing was sitting solid. I'd get an, I'd get an idea or I'd say, okay, yeah, this is, this is the passion or this is where I want to go with it. And I do it. And then the passion or something would just fall off a bit. Mm. And it was just, something wasn't in the right place. And it was only very recently that that happened. It was only very recently that happened. And once it happened, it was like, it made my messaging very clear and it fit and it sat very well with the idea that I don't have to say, I don't have to be as explicit about my ideal client. I don't have to say, you're a man, you're a woman, you're young, you're old, you're rich, you're poor. You know, that's not the message that I'm trying to send out mm. there. Focus on what it is, you know, the, the messaging that I'm trying to put out there. And it just made everything else fall into place. It made, it made me identify how I do education how I do business, you know, how I can bring the things in um, later. And so I'd say, take the time. I know sometimes we think it's it's silly, but take the time to really find out. And that message is like your vision and your values. Find out really what is it that you're trying to achieve. Mm. So when you when you talk about business, often we're saying you're solving a problem, yeah. right? That's what it's about. What you're supposed to get to is that pain point of someone and you're solving that pain point of somebody. Focus on that rather than all the other stuff that people tell you to do. Once you focus on that, you say, okay, what's this pain point that I'm trying to fix? And why am I the person that can fix it? What is it that I have? Because all of us have something. 
And that's important because then you you will have confidence in selling that to anybody. Yeah. Because you, what is it your power? Don't try to emulate somebody else. Forget that. What's your power? Because you'll shrink and you'll, you know, if you're trying to go there because because you will feel like a fraud. Mm. You won't even believe it because you know you're lying. But you're not lying if it's genuinely you know that I've been through this thing or I've got experience in this thing or I'm passionate about a thing or or I've, I've actually solved this problem myself. Yeah. That's your superpower. And that is what you should build whatever it is you're trying to do around and sell in that. And finding the people that need that, you're going to hear no's. Don't worry about that. It means it wasn't for them. Mm. Sometimes it might be that your message isn't wrong, but most of the time it probably means that wasn't the person. And a very big thing I'm going to give everybody, a very big thing. Your friends and your family are not your customers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't make a business of your friends and your family because yeah. you know sometimes we get upset that people are not supporting our businesses. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. You need to get <laughs> people that you do not know. Yeah, purchasing your... <laughs> purchasing your goods. Yeah. Because there's a limit <laughs> to how much your friends and your family can support you. You know, they share the message or they buy a thing. That's it. Yeah. After that, it's on you. It's on you. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So forget trying to, all the energy that you put into trying to convince them, do that into finding the people yeah. who actually require your goods <laughs> or your services. Like, honestly, don't be upset. Yeah. And don't be upset if, if no one gets it. Like, go back to the drawing board. Be really honest with yourself and say, okay, is, is it, I'm not selling this the right way? Because there's a, there's a sale in everything. You know, you have to really be sending the correct message once you yeah. know it. So is it the fact that I'm not selling this the right way and I need to find out how to do this? Or is it I'm not putting it in the right place and therefore I need to go and find where the people are that require the goods or service that I have, yeah. you know? So th that would be one of the biggest things. Because see, once you have that, it's the foundation. It leads, it literally leads everything else because it leads when you say, yes, I am going to take that job or no, I'm not going to. Yeah. No, I'm not going to take that job. You know, it's going to it's going to really dictate all of the decisions um, that you make. And don't 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 be afraid. I seriously do not be. You've, what's the worst that can happen? That's one of my coaching things. The people who I coach, they tell you that I tell them, will you die? The kind of provocative push that I say when people come to me, because sometimes we tell ourselves lies and that's all we hear. <laughs> yeah. So I say to them, mm -hmm, but will you die? You don't know, what's that, um, oh, what film is it? But did you die though? The, um, it's not Hangover, but it's that same guy from Hangover, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, sorry. Right, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, and that's, and literally, when I find myself, because I'm still human, right? So I do it too. When I find myself in that moment, I see that I'm procrastinating because mm. that's my thing. I say, Martha, like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Will you die? No, no, you won't. And so it's funny because I remember one of my friends recently said to me, Martha, you're so fearless. And I thought it was very interesting because I am so not fearless. <laughs> I am scared as hell. Yeah. And fear of failure is the, it's been my crippling thing throughout my life, you know? Yeah. That fear of failure is one of the reasons why I always play up at school. It's from school days. I was always messing around <laughs> because if I underperformed, I could always, I knew I underperformed because I messed around, mm. not because I actually genuinely tried and didn't do great. So I knew that. And so I switched that. I'm not, I'm not fearless but I just do it anyway. Mm. Literally, I am scared. I do it anyway, because what is the worst that's going to happen? Honestly. And that comes even with putting money into things. You know, I don't believe you should just throw your money away, but you've got to put some money into things. It's money. What will happen? Okay, I'm going to have to pay a little bit more interest. Okay, I'm going to pay a little bit more interest. You know, like, I'm not going to die. Mm. You're not going to kick me out of my house it's really not going to get that diabolical. So just just do, do it. I say to people, you would be amazed at how, you know, we need a bit of pressure. Mm. Once you, because see, once you've paid the money, you now know that you've got to pay it back. <laughs> You'll be amazed how you, things start working <laughs> and things start happening. Yeah. You have to be outside your comfort zone to grow. Mm. You have to be outside your comfort zone to grow. So do it. Take, take those risks. You don't, if you think that you're going to do business with no risks, then, Boy. <laughs> then forget it. Impossible. Forget it. That reminds me of that, um, that Susan Jeffers book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Yeah. That one, that was a quite a good, 
I'm sure you've read that one. Yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah. read it. Oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't read it, but yeah. Well, everything you just said basically summarizes it to yeah. be honest. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, it's, it's true because I honestly, just, if you're a worst case scenario person, fine, no problem. What's the worst case scenario? Mm. And is that really a big, a big deal to you? Like, mm. is it, is that worst case scenario worth more than what your best case scenario is? Or even if it's not your best case scenario, just one step forward mm. scenario. Like really, yeah. is it really worth it? Yeah. And you know, so I say do that. Yeah. No, nice. I remembered what I was going to, what I was going to say. Again. You mentioned about um, how um, business isn't for everybody, for example. And mm-hmm. it, it, many people's, uh, so th- the, the only point I was going to make on that was the fact that, because the, the kind of tagline to uh, the Black Print is, um, as you would have heard at the start, is providing aspiring black entrepreneurs and business owners the blueprint to start your success story and now it's kind of there's two halves to it the first half is entrepreneurs and business owners right Mm -hmm. or aspiring entrepreneurs and business owners but the thing is i'm not necessarily strictly trying to speak to solely aspiring entrepreneurs and business owners Mm -hmm. because the second half of the tagline which is to start your success story ties in with what you were saying about businesses are for everybody so I do want this to be a platform where people can feel motivated and inspired to kind of go out and just achieve whatever it is they want to achieve, yeah. whether it is starting business or whether it is just elevating in their career. The reason I started with aspiring black entrepreneurs and business owners is because I myself would like to be a business owner. Yeah. And so that's kind of why I, I did it like that. But it's exactly as you said, not business isn't for, isn't for everybody. It really isn't. And people listen to this don't think that just because I'm speaking to business owners that, that that is the pure definition of success it's not and I will at the end of it um, come to what your definition of success is but um, before we do that or before we get there I was going to also ask you about your first clients mm-hmm. how did you go about securing your first clients my first clients and to be fair the majority of my clients have come from referrals nice have come from referrals I will get I will say that definitely um, And I think, you know, the field in a personal development field, you know, when you're kind of in that type of space, it is very much about, oh yeah, I've worked with this person before, you know. Um, Naturally, I have a few clients who were on programs, which I was a coach on or, you know, Mm. or I'd done training on something. Yes, but the majority of them, and and still till now, the majority of them still come um, come through referrals. Lots of them come through referrals. And so... I guess wherever you are or whatever field or industry you're in, it's it's leveraging that. So mine came through the education kind of space and yeah. field. Um and then and then a few friends um as well. But then so you can you can do the same. Anyone can kind of do do the same process and then once you've once you've done that, you start finding the spaces and the fields that Networking is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Really, really important. And the beginning <clears throat> of this year, um, LinkedIn, and I, I think around Corona time, I started to really go hard at LinkedIn and make some really good network connections mm. and stuff. Um, not not clients though. They it wasn't clients that at that point. It was more partnerships, mm. which lead to clients. So it was more getting into companies and businesses and like exposure. Yeah. Um, and so just just take the time take the time to do that you'd be amazed at, at how time flies because I think sometimes we want it overnight yeah I remember being on LinkedIn thinking this doesn't work how are people and I just had to tweak messages you know you know being consistent going through that process and then I started to see started to see those results mm. so if people see me now on LinkedIn like this is a year later this is a year's that's a year's worth of work that I did. Yeah. And along that way, I tweaked and refined and, you know, adapted and changed along the way. And I didn't just give up the moment it didn't work. I didn't just give up the moment I sent 200 messages and yeah. or 200 contact requests and got five. And sometimes that's what, that's what we do. You can't, yeah. you just, you just cannot give up. You just literally cannot give up. Yeah. And it, let's, let's talk about networking a little bit more because, um, um, uh, well, a couple of guests have, have mentioned that networking mm-hmm. as well is, is particularly important and I know from myself as well I've been to I think I've only been to one networking event this is more kind of in the career, more career focused networking event type thing and I remember I went there and I have no issue kind of introducing myself to people talking to people or saying hi what do you do type of mm-hmm, thing mm-hmm. that's not my problem at all my problem was I'll take their business card and then I w- after that I wouldn't know what to do 
I'll be like, make contact. Yeah, I'll be like, so how do I? Because the interesting thing about actually, so the networking event I went to was actually like a specifically a kind of mentoring type event, mm-hmm. right? Where you go there and the idea is it, they were launching a new mentoring kind of um, platform, if you like, where you go there and you can you register and then they'll basically hook you up with a, with a mentor, if you like. Um, but they strongly encouraged you yourself to kind of go out and speak to people and, and whatnot. So like I said, I had no problem doing that, but then I'll get the business card and I was like, oh, good to meet you. Yeah, all the best. I'm like, what, what do I say? So I kind of wanted to almost tap into your experience with networking. And have you have you been to networking events? Yeah, I've been to I've been to a few networking events, mm. and I'm and similarly, I'm a, I'm a good networker. I'm a, I'm a good networker, and I'm also I think I'm quite open in kind of encouraging people to speak to me. And there's two mm. sides to that. I'm terrible at asking for help. <laughs> like literally, 2021. I'm just going to ask everybody for help yeah. as in go to the extreme. Cause I am, I'm really bad uh, at asking for help. And a part of that comes from just that whole idea of not wanting people to tell you no. Mm. Right. I'm pretty, much, I'm pretty much the same. Yeah. And so, so I'm, I'm very much aware of it and that's mm. something, and that stems with everything that it's become less because I've realized I've gone, you're going to have to hear no, you hear no from the clients and, following up clients uh, is <laughs> it's like you got to email them 15 times and I'm conscious of I feel I'm conscious of like oh gosh I don't want to uh, I don't want to feel like a pest and yeah but do you know what you just got to do it you've literally got to do it so when you're in that space I guess there's a number there's a there's a few things often we feel like that kind of thing of I'm asking you for something and I'm yeah. not, I don't have anything to offer I think it's always about being genuine. Mm. Be be genuine. Like honestly, be genuine. You're going to there's different things. So there's some networking and mentoring events where the those relationships are free, and there's some of those where those relationships are paid. Mm. And so I think you have to be very genuine about what it is that you're doing and what it is that you want. So if you're in a space where people are offering those services are for free, then then ask for it and let them know and and find out and speak and see what what it is that you want and what you're hoping yeah. to 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 get from something. If it's a if it's a mentor mentee type relationship, because in that sense, you're the mentee, you're going to somebody. If it's a collaborative relationship, then you need to be identifying, you want something from that person because they have something. Yeah. What sort of value can you provide back genuinely? You know, maybe find out, just ask them a question. Just yeah. ask them, what is it? How do they feel potentially? What, what sort of links do they feel they could have? That was one of the biggest things for my networking on LinkedIn, how I changed my messaging. And it just literally went from, it was genuine. I was genuinely networking. And it would be like, I saw somebody who I really liked the work they were doing or resonated with me. Mm. And I wanted to, and I generally wanted to know, let's talk, literally, let's just have a conversation and see if there is any way we could work together that will be beneficial. That was what that was what I was doing. It wasn't, it's not like I knew exactly what you could provide me. And if we spoke, and there was no way, no harm. I've learned about your, your services. And if I come across a client or anybody that requires your services, I'll tell them mm. because it's not something that I provide. Yeah. And um, and I'm hoping you would do do the same. And if we can work together, then beautiful. Yeah. We, we get to work together. Coming from that place of genuine interest is, is you can only win because there's no loss. And not everybody's like that. Honestly, not everyone's like that. And and with sometimes with good reason, because I've also heard of people who have, you know, gone out the way, helped people. Someone's just basically downloaded all of their knowledge and information for free and gone off and done something with it. But I just believe um, what you put out there is what mm. you get. So if I go out there with a guise of everyone's going to be out here to try and steal my ideas, I just think I'm going to only come across people who are going to steal my ideas. Yeah. I've got no control over them. I've only got control over me. So I like to work in a manner that how I would like to be treated. Yeah. And that so far has worked for me. Yeah. No, nice. And so in terms of um, kind of like the business side of things and when you get con- when you get clients and stuff like that, just, um, I guess it's kind of like a random question literally just came to me because I was just thinking about it for some reason. Um, how did you, so you draw contracts up with, with, the, with your clients? Um, yeah, yeah, different ones. So there's so because I work with various different. So at an individual level, on mm. on a coaching kind of level, yeah, we we have a contract and it says kind of things like you know, um, just about payment and you know, 
contact and time and the things that you're what you're supposed to do mm. and then there's there's other ones if i'm working like as a freelance then there's that kind of contract invoicing process with the with the company and my company mm. um that we do so yes the, so there will be contracts involved and it's important to do contracts i say even if you're working with friends mm. just because it's the unspoken stuff the, the person wasn't wicked this person isn't wicked <laughs> you two just didn't what you meant and what this person was thinking are two different things. And it wasn't a detail that you ironed out. Mm. So you can work with your friends, but just iron out all the details. And I know it, I know sometimes people feel like, oh no, you know, I'm working with a friend. If they were trustworthy or if they were real or, you know, mm -mm, you actually save your friendship yeah. by making sure you dot the I's and you cross the T's. So there's no misunderstanding. Yeah. Let's make sure everyone's very clear. Don't be, because it's not when you're, when you now realize you feel like I've been taken advantage of that you're now going to address this problem yeah. with somebody. Yeah. You know? So yeah. those things, just dot your I's, dot your I's and cross your T's. Some things can be on, on you know, on faith mm. and on that. But other than that, it's business. It, the biggest issue, this is business. <laughs> Stop it. Stop acting like it's not business. Mm. Like, I don't understand how people do it. It's business. Treat it like business business doesn't have to be cutthroat mm. i'm not saying that you have to be cutthroat but we are dealing with business here so you've come you might be my friend but you're using my service it's not free i yeah. went to school i pay electricity i pay gas i had to get the paper there's a cost here mm. you know so stop it we are doing business and if you don't want to respect that that's fine but you're the person that's going to be upset with it. So if you are now the person that's giving away all this freeness to your friends, you can't be upset with them if you yeah. haven't established that boundary. Yeah. So you need to make sure you know you're saying, like that's the. I think that's a big thing for people as well when we genuinely say to ourselves, "I'm in business." Because I did that. I remember I was still so because I was working from home. I was I was genuinely free. You know, like mm. I'm not like I'm not doing work, but. It's my time. But then I realized that people kind of thought me working from home for myself meant that I'm like sitting at home doing nothing and that basically they can ask me to come anywhere. And then when I say I can't, I'm busy, they'd be like, oh yeah, but you're working from home. Yeah, no, come on. I'm like, so I had to, so I had to nip that in the, but yeah. I feel like it was my own fault mm. because I wasn't treating my, like, seriously like, this is my work day, Monday, this is my schedule, you know, Tuesday, this is my schedule. Mm. These are the things that I'm doing for this company. This is the thing I'm doing for this sort of thing. Because I had that freedom, I was also projecting that with my friends. And so, yeah, that's it's business. No, yeah. no that's, that's fair. Um, and in terms of drawing up an actual contract, is it literally just simple as just going to like a solicitor or something and just saying- Oh, no, well, I haven't, I haven't done any solicitor contracts. You know. no, not, I haven't. I mean, I reckon if listen, if I get a multi million pound deal, I'm going to go to the <laughs> solicitor. But I haven't had any contracts that have been uh, an amount that I have felt anyway that mm. required um, uh, a solicitor. You know, mm. um, so no. But if it was a if it was a big hundreds and thousands of pounds contract, like something like that, mm. I, I definitely I definitely would. But um, anything anything else is fine. Yeah, it's not. Again, I, that's the thing. Again. It's not, nece it's not necessary. We're talking, we're working here currently, we're at small business. Mm. You, we don't need to spend our money sometimes on all these things that are not necessary. There's so many also organizations and helps and things out there that have guide, guides, even some law firms mm. will provide you with information. And like, just like if you're renting your home, mm. you know, you can find a, a good tenancy agreement that's, mm. that's, that's valid. You can do the same thing with your contracts. You, okay. you're not unless you're dealing with proper big bucks you don't need to go through yeah you don't need to, to go be... through all of that yeah no fair enough and so how generally speaking like how's how's business been over and i know you said this year's been Listen, pretty I, I have only god no one can't this no one can't say god doesn't exist you, you can't i don't even you cannot say god doesn't exist. and doesn't mm. don't get me wrong it doesn't mean i haven't had those times when i've been a bit worried and been like whoa what am I going to do? <laughs> but some, I have worked. Mm. I've had work for the entire year. I've had work for the entire year. I don't even, I don't even know. Yeah. I have had literally had work well, for it, the did entire it, year. Did, was it, so prior to lockdown, was it, 
consistent or did it kind of spike because of lockdown? Uh, no, it consist- kind of the, it was kind of the same, mm. kind of the same. So I've had a consistent contract mm. since the beginning of February mm. with, a, with a, uh, one organization that I work with. Mm. Um, another organization that I work with, uh, we've been, we've got quite busy recently, the other half of here. So uh, about October, mm. we've kind of got busy and in between, I had like the, I've had clients mm. like my own kind of clients back and forth, and then I've had a few, um, a few companies and things that I've I've done some work with. Yeah. And so what I would say is I'm very much big point of it is is I I think we have to understand the big difference between oh like being self employed because I think I've got a business and they're going things, but I'm still very much self employed. Mm. Then when then I am fully at operational where I've coming to that point where I'm employing people mm. and employing staff and it's fully passive and that's where I want to go yeah like I want to build to the point where it becomes um passive and that's another reason why I have various other items because a lot of the my stuff my service stuff my coaching my training my um, um consulting that's all very service based it's very yeah. much me and so if I'm not there there's no money yeah and so one half of that first part is developing the products the you know the trainings online and books and things to so that it's passive yeah but then also doing getting involved in areas which are like so travel might be a service but i can employ people to do that yeah and so that's the next level because i think sometimes that's what we also don't understand mm. you can also end up becoming a victim to being in a position where you're still kind of hand to mouth with food yeah. just it's your own but it's all the pressures on you, yeah. which can be more pressures on, you know, that can be more pressure because you know that if you don't go work and work, it's not like your employer, you, it's all coming in for you. Yeah. And so I say that might be required for a period. It's often required for a period. Even if you open a business with a product, it's still probably going to be you yeah. in the warehouse or, you know, packing things for a period of time. Yeah. But you're, if you're going to go down this and you're doing it because you want the soul freedom, you need to get into a position where it becomes passive. Yeah. That should be the goal. We're getting to a point where it becomes passive. That doesn't mean you're not going to be a part of it because like I said, I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. Um, and so even more so, I want it to become more passive because I don't want to feel like sitting doing a coaching session with someone or doing a training session with someone. I'm doing it because I need to pay my bills. Mm. I want to do it because I love doing it. Yeah. So that's kind of like the next phase. And I think we also people need to understand that most small, firstly, most small businesses fail in the first five years. Yeah. Yeah. More than 85% of them fail. No one understands that. And a lot of that is because you're very, you're not in the first couple of years, you're not likely to be, to, to break even. Yeah. You're likely to be in the red. And I was, so I was, I was funding the business. It was all my money that was going through and, you know, doing things, buying things, going through all that process. That was all my money. Yeah. That wasn't, we were in the red. And now I've got a consistent, I've got a consistent stream of money coming in. Like I said, I'm still kind of in the red. Mm. Like, so I've got more money coming in than going out now, but that doesn't mean there wasn't, there's not a backlog mm. of money. So you still got to get to that point before this is genuine profit. Mm. And sometimes people don't tell you that. People don't tell you that because it's going well now. So I could sit here and I could say to everyone, if it's going well and it's excellent and it's fabulous and that's just, part of the the bigger picture yeah in 10 years time then hopefully not even hopefully 10 years time that's when it's going to be fully passive and everything's going to be fully kind of um you know profit self-sufficient you know and self-sufficient and that would have meant so that's a 20-year journey yeah you know so so it's something that you've got to be in for the long haul it's not it's not going to happen it's not going to happen overnight and revenue is not profit yeah it, re- it really isn't so i think people need to be aware of that yeah and so how do you keep track of your finances are you quite good with the like the accounting side of things or? yeah yeah so i'm still doing my accounts at the moment mm. but i'm very close to giving that over mm. to other people and i'm still only really doing my accounts at the moment because because it's it's at a point where it's still kind of easy mm. so it's easy for me to do um there's nothing real huge or big and like you know, it's fine we're not we're not we've not got all of this different happening it's just me yeah but the the moment and i'm getting there so the moment i start i employ one person and that's things going to an accountant it's going directly to an accountant because yeah. i don't want to have to be dealing with any of 
of of the bigger stuff and again it's things like that i don't it business and accountancy it's in my background mm. so it wasn't alien to me mm. so it's not a stress for me to, to to operate that but and it's but your accounts are really really important mm. so if you're not confident in doing it just just find find an account they're not it's not expensive you can mm. get a good accountant for like five six hundred pounds who will do you know the work for you that you need that you need to do yeah. so if you're not confident in it then do it but if you are at the beginning of your like your the beginning of your business and you're literally pretty much just putting out money if you haven't incorporated your company first if you haven't incorporated it doesn't matter mm. per se right unless you're fully self um employed and stuff and you it probably still won't matter as much because you're probably not making a profit so there's mm. no tax for you to pay or or any of that stuff so just don't think you have to go out and pay for everything mm. like take the time so there's there's two sides some things i'm like it's not worth my energy let me just pay somebody but other things i'm like it's not i'm not at a point yet where yeah. i need to be increasing my expenditure on something that i can just take a little bit of time yeah and do myself that is each to their own yeah you know look at all those different areas whatever it is that you want to do if you think you're confident enough to do them then do it until you need an accountant if you're not then then you know get the accountant to do the you know the submission yeah um kind of side of of all of those things yeah no that's that that makes sense and so earlier on you touched on how you feel the quality of your life has massively oh. improved since uh since obviously starting your your yeah. own thing um just let's just dive into that a little bit more so when you like how why what what's what, I, what's made it so much better i mean i don't wake up with an alarm <laughs> <laughs> i don't wake up to an alarm there is no alarm that wakes up and i mean to be fair i guess the fact that we're all at home mm. that's probably it's probably more to do with that because people have become very understanding about working from home mm. um so that's a big deal fine i'm gonna accept part of that but still i still still i still get to pick the jobs that i will do yeah or that i won't do yeah like i don't feel like i'm being held ransom to money and so that's a really important thing i'm doing what i want to do mm. how i want to do it when i want to do it and coming from an education field education is suffering it's suffocating because you've got fixed holidays you know i was the head teacher you know you've got to act a certain way you've got to behave mm. a certain way you've got to do all of these things it's very very suffocating um whereas i don't have any of those things like mm. the first time like last year or so i went on to on holiday outside of a school holiday i was like a kid <laughs> i was like i'm on holiday you probably saved yourself time. a good 75 percent as well yeah good right and like all, all of that as well so there's so there's those sorts of things it's it's really strange but it's just the ability to actually be doing what you want to do mm. on a task on a job you know it's it's really it's it's really important it's mm. really 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 important and then and then the timings that you that you get to to go somewhere or do something yeah i can i it's my calendar so i can move things around mm. so yes i have a fixed calendar but if i really need to i have the freedom to move things around yeah. and say okay do you know i don't I, I don't really want to do this or i have i have the freedom to do something in the middle of the day yeah i have the freedom because some days i'm like let me wake up earlier yeah some days are like i'm so tired let me go take a nap you know like i can i can do all of all of those things which are mm. really 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 important you know so i'm i can go meet a friend for lunch somewhere because mm. we're more of us are working from home there's just all of these little things if you think about the stuff that you wanted to do that you just couldn't do all the, yeah. the, the the annoyances and the and the bugbears and all of that stuff it's just it's just not there and what is quality what do we work for we work so that we can spend quality time with our friends and family but most of the time you're either you don't have the time mm. or you're tired or you don't <laughs> earn enough yeah. to kind of get out and do those things or even if you do earn enough you're too tired yeah to do anything with it and so i've just like i said I, I I'm not raking in and I'm saying this is because it's off I'm saying the actual take home that I get to take home right because yeah. I might be having more revenue as overall my overall salary but I've got expenditures yeah and so I don't make as much as I was but I haven't stopped doing anything yeah like I literally there's nothing that I have stopped doing I've got more time I'm chilled I'm relaxed I'm free. Literally, that's what it's about. It's free. I have a little saying. I say I'm freelance, so I'm free. 
And um, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think yeah. I think it's just about not having to answer to somebody. Oh God, that is a... Wow. I, think I hate answers to people at work. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's what it is. And fortunately, I mean, no one's perfect, mm. but the majority of companies that I do work with are really good. Mm. So... I like I like working with them, or at least the contact person that I have contact with. Yeah, is is good, and do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Like, depending if you ever had that, but if you ever had that point where you've had a customer or a client or somebody, and you don't want to work with them, yeah. but you you have to work with them. Yeah, I don't have that problem. Actually, I was about to say something, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I don't know who's going to hear this. Yeah, let me like, keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't have that, I don't have that problem. And it's even on the, even when I've been like, you know, you, we put up, I put myself out there, social media, things like that. And ha- like, prime example. So when the whole Black Lives Matter movement stuff happened, like on LinkedIn, I was, like, I was doing LinkedIn fire. And because... I was no longer working for anybody. There was mm. no PC stuff I had. You weren't going to contact anybody. So I was just going back and forth, back and forth with people. <laughs> really? No, just really putting them in their place and being yeah. like, I'm not accepting it. Really politely as well. You know when you just, you know when you get underneath people? Yeah. And I remember one lady, she was going back and forth with me about this thing. Um, and then she went, She obviously she went to my profile to kind of check. And she was, and she had spoken to somebody else and said, oh, I've um, screenshotted what you've said and I've sent it to your employers. I wonder if they will be happy about what it is you're doing. And she was like, oh, don't bother um, kind of saying the same to me because I'm self-employed. <laughs> and she messaged me privately and said, oh, it's been really good um, kind of um, like speaking to you back and forth. You know, you can hold an argument, you know, did it well done. But the whole point was, is that she went to my page, yeah. she checked, she saw that there was nowhere else for her to go. Yeah. There was nowhere else for her. There was no one her she could report me to. <laughs> so she had to admit kind yeah. of defeat. And that's what I like. And I've had that loads of times where I'd be like on my platform, we're talking about things and people are like, oh, if you, if you have those views, no one want to work with you. And I've just been like, well, anyone that doesn't want to work with me, guess what? I don't want to work with them. And I'm in that position to say, I don't want to work with you. I, yeah. I no longer need to tame my messaging or anything that I'm doing. I am a very big part of what my organization stands for. Mm. If I don't sit right with you, then we are not a good fit. I'm no longer in a position where I have to act small or bite my tongue or do any of those things mm. for anything at mm. all. Because there's people out there who are going to work with me. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's people out there that are going to work with me. So it's, yeah, that's what, it's a big part of it. It's, that freedom. Yeah. is really important. No, that's nice. That's nice. Um, and so go, just going back to kind of like the earlier days, because mm-hmm. obviously we, we, we've established that this year has been a, a good year. Yeah. We're happy with this year. Um, but let's just quickly go back to the days where uh, you were kind of starting out and you were kind of looking for your first clients. Yeah. And stuff. How did you kind of overcome, um, when the days were slow and you, you were struggling to find the clients or you were getting a few no's, how did you overcome that? No, do you know what? To be honest, I knew it would be difficult because mm. when I first started out, I was, I was, so the first couple months I was, um, it wasn't too difficult because it's kind of easy to get into teaching mm. in terms of it. once you've got a qualification and you've got background and I worked with a big academy chain, it was easy for me to kind of get in. Mm. So it wasn't too challenging like that. Um, and that side, it was more, that side, it was less just consulting and it was more a part of that was part of my teaching as well. So it was easier. So I don't think that's necessarily a true representation of what it would be like. But when I was working full time and I was in Nigeria and I was trying to build myself up, I just said to myself, Martha, take it slow. Mm. It's going to be almost impossible for me to survive and be successful and do it both of these things at the same time. Mm. I knew that to really get contracts and really get work, I'd have to go full time in my business. Mm. So I used that time to build my network. So I saw it very much as a process mm. of building my name. Let me become known as a specialist as this sort of th- person. So that when you start talking about it or you're saying you want a consultant or you want an education consultant and things that my, when, when they say me, you'd be like, oh yeah, we've heard her name or we've seen her work or this mm. is what she was doing. So I was doing, I was doing a lot of conferences. I was doing a lot of training. I was doing a lot of posts. I was putting myself out there. Mm. 
And so it wasn't about making money at all. That period was literally about exposure and kind of building my network period. Yeah. And but, but, and because I had a job, because I had a job, I could do that. And the idea was about phasing it out. Yeah. So if I if that hadn't happened, what I would have done at the end of my three year contract was that hopefully I would have been established enough and built enough people that I would have been able to transition from my full time job there to my business being full time. Yeah. So that was what kind of like my plan was was going to be. And and I think it's good in the sense of if you're at this stage now where you're thinking about going into a business but you've still got your job you don't have to quit everything now build yourself up mm. start you know start getting on you know use your social media presence start doing conferences or talks or or you know show if you're a product start going to shows you know start getting yourself out there all of that is a kind of a research base yeah. to, and you've got nothing to lose you're really testing the field you've got time to hone it in because you're making money still so this mm. really is your experimental period i think it also makes you feel better you know you don't have to worry as, as much so for me that was at the safety net that was mm. what i did that made it kind of safe i ended up like, getting thrown in the deep end so i had no choice but to jump yeah but i still had a little bit of friction underneath me you know i still had the experience of yeah. kind of going through that process before that so so that's what i say so if you're somebody now who's still in your full-time job you don't have to think oh let me wait until i have to make that decision mm. before i start building um, my business and particularly like I said your reputation you know that all of us talk about it you know that's it whether it's on on the social media sides now where things are kind of popping off really quickly mm. it's still someone sends it to you who sends it to you who sends it to you any of the latest fads or things that we've seen very few of us have seen it ourselves yeah. very few of us are the actual person that yeah. started that trend and saw it you know we talked about it in the group or someone said oh did you hear about this thing that's happening <laughs> yeah. now or there's this really cool thing that's coming out now so that's really powerful that's really really powerful that's how people even if you want to get on the tv mm. that's how they come to you because you're trending yeah so so that could be the way that you kind of support yourself um in in the beginning getting yourself out there yeah start small start small like uh, a, a couple of things i also did is um either discounted services so kind of like because you know you re um referrals and references are really good so you can just have I'm new, you don't know me. Look, this is a off this is a service that I'm providing. Here is it a discounted price. Or look, even look, I'm gonna just do it. And then if it's to standard, you pay for it, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. like afterwards. All I'm or all i if you can afford to in certain little things, even do some for free and just say, Can you write me a LinkedIn review? And LinkedIn reviews are really good, um, because it's you actually see the person. Yeah. So LinkedIn, Google get people to Google review. So I haven't got Google review. So next year, that's my next thing. I've got, I'm starting to get my, as myself, my LinkedIn presence is there. But next year for the business and the things that I'm doing, what I want that to be is Google because that's out there. So yeah. if people see you've got Google reviews, that is valid. Yeah. You know, they got Anthony Joshua vouching for them. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's, it's important. So take the time. That doesn't cost anything. Mm. So you can build up your, your reputation yeah. um, like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's nice. And um, so I know you mentioned kind of wanting to expand the the group mm -hmm. into going into beauty and other, and other various, um, various avenues and stuff. Um, but what, so that would be kind of be like the long, I guess the longer term, if you yeah. like, and obviously you said going yeah. kind of towards more of a passive income. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like the next steps, what's next for, what's next for you and what's next for the, for the, for the group? Well, good question, you know. So next steps, I'm very much about taking my time to build each of the individual kind of components that are mm. here now. So those, the, the front line, there's three front line services that I've been doing and that's the personal development side, mm -hmm. Martha, De, Martha De Cosme, the business consulting development side, business De Cosme consulting and the education side. Mm. Um, and I have a finance side as well, which is actually doing kind of very well. Um, and so alongside that, I've, I'm trying to write a children's finance book okay. uh, uh, for the black community. So using mm. black characters, but teaching children finance. So that's something that um, I'm wanting to get into. I also want to do a training program for black educators. Do that. And then I'm working with a charity at the moment. Um, and I want to get into supporting black businesses with business consulting and really their strategic direction. Yeah. Outside of it. And then there's the the Cosme side, Martha the Cosme side, which is looking at developing a, a training program that just really helps people 
overcome obstacles or overcome barriers, kind mm. of those blockages in our life, just to know that it doesn't matter what's ever happening, you can overcome them. So they're the kind of projects, they're the key things that I've said. They're kind of the medium, short to medium term goals that that's the project that I'm launching, yeah. that I want to succeed before Martha thinks she's going to try and go do <laughs> anything else. Because sometimes I like to try and do too much at yeah. once. And not all of that can be done in one year, mm. but they're the they're the ones that I'm kind of saying, this is what I want to do. So, and they're, it's going to be very much kind of, which ones I do is very much in talks with, you know, how they pop off or mm. people I'm currently talking to where it goes. But in those sorts of orders, I'm working on each of those things. So I'd say over the yeah. next two years, they're definitely what I'm going to be doing. Nice. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Good luck with that. Um, Cool. So I think uh, I'll ask you a few final final questions if you like. Um, I'm trying to work out in which order I should ask them. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it this way. Um, New Year's is coming up. Mm-hmm. What's your New Year's resolution? So each year I have a resolution, a process, or kind of like a year of something. Last year was my year of intention. And this year, for some reason, love's been on my mind. And so this year is my the year of love. So what I'm perpetuating and putting out there and what we want to do is love. Mm. And I don't know what that means, but it just keeps coming up, coming up. I had it and I was like, okay, but what does that mean, Martha? And so, yeah. How did it come up? It's just like- It was just, I don't know. It was just, I was just like, okay, so what's the thing that's happening this Mm. year? How have you been feeling? And I think I've just been like, I'm very much about happiness. Mm. That's always been my thing. I'm saying be about happiness. Like, you know, strive for happiness. I want everyone to be happy. I really do. Mm. Um and I think love is what underpins that. And I think we need love. Like just we need everything. Business, everything. Everything needs some love. Yeah. So everything that I do next year is gonna have an element of love to it. Nice. And I was fe- I was actually feeling like love is not businessy Martha. But literally it's just been like, you know, I've been reading things or I've been going past things and something comes up and it's just stayed there. Mm. So I can't fight it. Fair. Fair. So I'm loving more. I'm trying hating less. Nice. Very nice. Um, sorry, my stomach's been rumbling. I don't know. I'm hoping the microphone doesn't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't worry. We've just got a little bit more time. A little bit more time. <laughs> um, uh, cool. And so in terms of, because um, obviously this is the, the idea of this pod is to kind of, inspire, motivate and, and just help people who potentially want to go down the same avenue of just kind of starting their businesses or whatever. What would your advice be to someone who is looking to set out in business? What kind of one key piece of advice would you give them? I'd say know why you really want to set that business up mm. and do not let nothing or no one get in your way. Life happens, so there might be a delay or you might have to pivot. Mm. But identify the reason why or genuinely and it has to be genuine because it you might be doing it because of you're running away from something or there's something traumatic or you know you've just been told that you're supposed to do it mm. identify the genuine reason like you want to do something find it make sure it's healthy mm. like if you have to switch it around and really find yourself then do that and then once you're solid on what it is that you want to do start setting the plan to to, to get there mm. and there's like i said there's no failure you can't fail mm. You, you you cannot fail like if you say i'm going to do it by this date and it doesn't happen you've only failed if you quit yeah so literally never quit yeah never ever never quit because nice. something will happen like yeah. you something will happen don't quit something will happen yeah i think one of the um areas recently in which we've seen that kind of personified the most if you like is particularly with things like youtube for example I was having a conversation with a, with a good friend of mine and um, we were kind of looking at some of the big YouTube stars and some of these people have been going about from for 10, 15 years from before any of us even knew what YouTube was. These guys have been posting videos mm-hmm. and we were literally just saying that. Imagine these people gave up. Yep. Imagine after a year, they were like, I've only got 100 followers. I'm going to give up. Mm-hmm. 15 years later, they've got millions and millions of followers now. And I mean, they're living comfortable lifestyles because of it. But <laughs> it like, I mean, yeah. that's exactly that. Just and I never think give today's... Up society is um you know it's a what's it called i can't remember but... like all about instant gratification yeah, yeah but it's a bit that. of a um false it's a bit of a fallacy in the mm. sense that 
it says that because we think it's so quick mm. easy overnight we kind of think that if you haven't made it after a couple of years mm. you can you can never do it yeah. but regardless of the model regardless of what the model is it yeah. takes time for things to build yeah there are a few anomalies <laughs> but regardless of whatever whoever you talk about mm. even some of the most successful successful people you saw them overnight yeah. but in the background yeah in the background they've been doing this for years yeah yeah. They've been doing this for years. So that, and that's the truth of it. That literally the most successful people in the world are the people that just did not give up. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. And so my final question would be quite simply, what does success mean to you? For me, I'm going to give you two things. For me, and it kind of brings it to that. For me, success is fulfilling my purpose. Mm. So... I genuinely believe we're all here for a purpose. I genuinely believe that I'm the type I I'm the type of person who I'm very much like I'm a person that's I'm chaos. I'm supposed to go into chaos and mm. I thrive there. <laughs> I do. I go into those spaces and I mix up the status quo. I'm that person. Yeah. Because I can handle it. I I, I like I'm I'm not upset. I don't mind. I didn't come here to be your friend. You didn't come to me to be your friend. We came here for a solution. And often that requires mixing things up, you know, mm. breaking the status quo, breaking down barriers. And um, for me, for me, that kind of whole idea of you can't do it. People said you can't do it or it's, it's difficult. I'm like, nah, none of that. You can be, do, have whatever you want. Mm. And so I will feel successful knowing that every single day I'm doing that. Mm. I'm in one realm or another. I'm working towards my purpose, which is also inspiring others to do to do the same thing. And that for me is that for me is successful. That's exactly what success is. And I think anybody else, you are you are successful in when you are able to do the exact same thing. You're using your your gifts and your talents, your knowledge, your skills, your experience to your purpose because you can't fail mm. because no one can be you. No one can do what you do the way you do it. Only you can do it. People can do things that are similar, mm. but you've got something that's unique. Mm. And so your success is you doing that thing every single day. So you get better and better and better and better at it. And if we take the time to really find out what that is, you that's when magic happens. That's magic. And that is success for me. Nice. Wow. Well, thank you very much for that. I've enjoyed. That I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much. That was a, a, a very, very good and very insightful conversation. So I appreciate that. And I pre like I said, I appreciate you taking your time out your day to come and have this conversation. Um, my last request of you. Are you are you quite big on social media? I, I'm, I'll be honest, bit, I think yeah, I found yeah, yeah. you... Um, I think I found you on a separate site, not yeah, on yeah. things. So um, I've got there. I got to my thousand followers on Instagram. <laughs> okay, I've got there. Woohoo! So let's uh, do some work. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get to ten thousand. Let's let, well. Hopefully, with my help, we can get you there. So feel yeah. free to uh, to uh, shout out your your pages and whoever yeah. else you want to shout out. Yeah. So you can. I've got a few Decosme pages. If you type in Decosme, which is D A C O S M E, you will see all the Decosme pages. Um, on there and all the different things um, mm. that I do. I've also got a website, so the Cosme Group. Unfortunately, like I said, been putting the work in. So if you type in the Cosme in Google, I come up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Make my mom, baby. Yeah, I did it. I did it. So, yeah, yeah no, you. nice. Well, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. And like I said, I wish you and the Cosme Group all the best. Same, same. I'll be listening. Well, I'll thank be you. listening, and I'd be glad to say that I was part of the beginning. <laughs> When, it, when this when this blows up, I want to come back and say I was part of the beginning. <laughs> no, of course, <laughs> of course. No, we'll, we'll we'll get you back so you can. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, ladies and gents, that's all we've got time for you today. This was a very uh, powerful conversation with Martha. So again, I want to thank Martha for taking the time out to come and have this chat, guys. If you've enjoyed it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's grow the community. Tell a friend to tell a friend, and let's come on. Let's grow this community of Black entrepreneurs, business owners, and people that just want to go out and do their thing and be successful. Like I said, if you're listening on Apple Music, please five star rating. That's all I ask for. 
you can say whatever you want in the comments. Just give me that five star rating, please, because th then that will help. It will let people hear about the black print organically, you know, because right now I'm putting in a lot of effort to get this, to get this, uh, to get this out there. But help me out with that, and that would be greatly appreciated. But hey, I've been your host, Darren, joined by Martha today. So Thank once you. again, thank you. This has been the Black Print. Peace.